Hi everyone and welcome to The Router, the official podcast of the UQ Computing Society where we explore the human side of tech. I'm your host Matt and I'm joined today by two members of the UQCS committee, Darren and Kenton. Today they're going to be taking us through their experiences working on side projects and how you too can develop your own little side projects with some guidance and lessons along the way. Hope you enjoy! All right. Hello, Kenton and Darren. How are you both? Hello, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Thanks. I'm good. Thanks as well. All right. Wonderful. Um, so before we begin talking about side projects and all that, uh, I thought it'd be good if you two could, uh, I guess, introduce yourselves to, uh, to the listeners for anyone who's not already familiar. Uh, Darren, if you want to go first. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Darren. Uh, Darren Fu, and I'm doing a degree in software engineering uh, and maths at UQ. Um, you might have heard of me uh, before uh, for the UQ planner project that I did uh, earlier last year. Yep. Okay. Hello, everyone. I, my name is Kenton, or you can find me at K on Slack. That's the single letter K. Uh, I'm in my fourth year or of a computer science and maths dual degree. Um, you might have seen me around in courses, or I've also tutored some courses, most interestingly, algorithms and data structures. Uh, and I've worked at some places doing web dev and other software things as well. All right, wonderful. Okay, so I guess so. I guess you've introduced yourselves and you're, you're both uni students. So I guess one of the mm -hmm. key characteristics of a university is procrastination. Um, and I guess one of the ways where you can have productive procrastination is through side projects. So um, I guess firstly, uh, I want to know what sort of side projects you've done. So I, I know Darren, you mentioned uh, you've done a timetable planner. I think Kenton, you've done yes. something similar as well. Um, yeah. But throughout your whole, your whole uni degree, uh, I guess from the very beginning, if you can remember like your first, your first little project that you did, uh, I'd love to know <laughs> where, where it all started. Yeah. Um, I think I can talk about this actually. Um, my projects tend to be not very creative. <laughs> um, for me, they're just about solving problems or nits that I have with things mm. in my day to day life. Um, when I first started uni, I think it was the end of first year or something, one of these nits in my university life was Blackboard. <laughs> Blackboard is super kind of hard to navigate. Uh, so the first thing I made was actually a little search engine for Blackboard. Oh, I so remember like, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you might have seen it or even used it yourself. Is this still up? Um, that's, that's very interesting. I, I'd like to see it now. <laughs> I'll be sure to uh, oh, yeah. let I, I you can, know where you can find it. I can link all this stuff oh, very um, cool. in the description. But I do remember it was like this little like search box over the... Over the yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was this user script, which is kind of like a Chrome extension, but more dodgy. <laughs> and it opens a search box and you can search all your courses uh, with a single keyboard shortcut on Blackboard. And it was actually super useful. And a couple of my friends used it. Um, so I think that was the first one I did. And it kind of set the tone for the rest of my side projects through my university career. Um, yeah, I think. Darren, what about you? Oh, very nice. Uh, can I ask whether you still use this uh, Blackboard extension today? Uh, that sounds ultra useful. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, okay. <laughs> we can talk about this later <laughs> if needed. But it was my first encounter with JavaScript. Uh -huh. And it was horrendous. Uh -huh. Yeah, Actually terrible. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. Um, so from my end, I think generally it's a little bit like what you said, Kenton. Like when I do a side project, it's generally if uh, I want to see something or there's something that I'm kind of annoyed at. Um, mm. Often, I think the, probably the smallest version of that is would probably just be uh, all the keyboard shortcuts that I've set up on my computer um, just to make it easier for myself to sort of uh, go about my day um, doing things, navigating around and all that. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, when I initially started, uh, I know Matt, you talked about, uh, when I first started university, but I think with side projects, uh, I first started, uh, when I was sort of just in high school, oh, um, nice. and I was really curious to learn about, uh, 
programming, coding, uh, electronics and all that. So I'd always try and find time to um, do some of my own things to sort of get a better, better understanding of, uh, of the different technology out there. Um, and I remember when I first kind of learned to program, uh, I made lots of little games, uh, things like, um, you know, Doodle Jump. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I made that with JavaScript and that was a lot of fun. Uh, this is a lot, this was a while ago now. Or oh, things like, uh, what do you call that? Uh, you know the game 2048? Um, oh, what, the one oh, with the yeah, slidey yeah, tile thing. Yes, yeah, 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 I made that one time and that was also a lot of fun. And I think when I first started programming, it was these kinds of like small projects that really got me motivated in uh, learning how to uh, how to write code. And yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, these days it's usually things that sort of annoy me a little bit um, that I want to... Uh, I, I want to fix up and probably I think that the best example of that would be um, would be the UQ timetable planner that I've made um, which is just really started as an annoyance um, of me going like why have they removed this um, can I try and like replace this with something else that I can use um, and that, that's sort of how I start it started yeah mm. Anton did you make any any games any <laughs> <clears throat> no, unfortunately, I was not creative enough to make any <laughs> games. Um, only boring things for me. Uh, no, that's right. I mean, yeah. I mean, personally, for me, I, I think I had a similar path to Darren. I did. Well, they weren't side projects, but uh -huh. like projects. Uh, I know, like I, 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 I played a lot qualify? of. Um, yeah, no. So I, I played this uh, this game called Step Mania, uh, which is like uh, you can imagine it's like Dance Dance Revolution, but on a keyboard. Um, and one of the very first side projects I did, or kind of side projects, was like, I, I there was this theme uh, that I really liked using. It was called Simply Love. And it was like this, like, this theme where you can like customize all the different colors and like the gameplay and what it looks like and everything. Oh, okay. And I made my own little version of it for like, with like scoring features and things like that. And it was all written in Lua, but I didn't actually write much Lua. I just looked at the existing code and like guessed <laughs> how to how to change it so that it would work um but yeah that, that was fun I, in fact i didn't even really think about that but honestly i kind um, of think that yeah. uh almost all side, side projects kind of start small uh, and when yeah, you're yeah, starting yeah. at the very beginning there's no intention of saying that oh this is going to and then this isn't even a requirement for a side project but like there's no requirement uh to say oh this is going to like uh become a huge thing or like it's going to be used by all these people right um and then when it's in that state like there's nothing wrong with uh saying oh that's a really cool style that i want to uh, try and mimic let's see how, how how close i can get to it um and often like uh just getting to that point right can be real really rewarding yeah and like i guess like tinkering with things that already exist is a good way of like getting comfy with like tech and stuff mm -hmm. so yeah. it doesn't even have to be like a, a brand new thing yeah but i guess absolutely. like so so like i think both of you have done things that are like from scratch though right so like the uq planner yeah. i'm guessing was from scratch and kenton your i think a few of your projects are just like from the very like beginning right yeah, you had an idea and you're like all right that. i will do it um so i guess the first well, I, one of the first decisions, like, okay, so how do you, how do you even like start? Like when you have an idea, what do you do? Like you just code something up or, or oh, I've like got something to sketch it out or, um, I've got a list, uh, I've got a list of things that I want to do when I get the time to. Yes. Um, I think definitely the first thing to do when you have an idea is to write it down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because these, mm. uh, sorts of, I think, uh, as Kenton called them sort of like, nitpicks that you usually find, right? They're probably the smallest of things that you just kind of come across uh, as you're doing something else uh, for uni or for work or whatever, right? Um, and then if you don't write them down, I mean, you easily just forget them. Um, and so it's good to keep a list. Uh, and then when you've got the time, you can come back and go, oh, hold on, uh, that might be worth doing. Uh, and then that's the start of your side project there. Mm. And and so like another thing, I guess, so when you, when you, when you, when you have an idea, uh, and you're like, I want to do this now. What's your What's your next step? That's a hard one to answer, Kenton. You have you got anything to? Uh... Um, yeah, it is a hard one to answer, but there are a few tips. I think. I think a lot of the time, <clears throat> if you're asking about choosing, like, what do you even do? Um, it's constrained by what the idea is. So, for example, if you want to do something. Um, I'll just run with my example of Blackboard, then it needs to work with Blackboard. 
So that pretty much means it has to be JavaScript and it has to run in the browser. Mm -hmm. um, once you have like the basic constraints set up, you can start Googling. Google is your best friend. <laughs> or um, Bing or DuckDuckGo. Yeah, your, 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 uh, your search engine internet, of choice. Internet indexer of choice. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can look up like how do I run JavaScript? How can I run custom JavaScript on a web page? And pretty quickly, you'll end up at user scripts or maybe even browser extensions. Mm. And then from that, it's just um, one step at a time. You might download uh, a basic sample extension and try to get it to load try to get it to do something small, like and <clears throat> print its existence to the console. And then it's just baby steps, one Google query at a time. How do I add a button? How do I search for text on a page uh, mm. until you build it all together into something useful? So so I guess so. your, your experience, Kenton, was not like you didn't go and look up an entire tutorial on how to write user scripts from the beginning and then... Uh, uh, do it, learn it, and then implement it afterwards, right? You just kind of did it one step at a time. Yeah, no. Um, this may just be my personal style, but I tend to do poorly learning from long tutorials mm -hmm. that try to teach you everything. I'd much rather learn things when they come up uh, because then I can immediately apply them. Yeah. And I just find that's more useful for myself. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of tutorials for all sorts of different uh, things if you prefer learning that way. Also videos. I'm not a fan of videos, but they exist. Lots of them. Learn JavaScript in 16 hours, isn't it? Um, exactly. 40 minutes. Exactly. Yeah, I can agree minutes, with that. 40 minutes, damn. I've, I've seen some videos like that, uh, React in 40 minutes or something like that. Uh, I mean, I mean for, for, like a, for, like a quick, for like a quick refresher, I guess. I've, um, I've, I've seen some where they even try to go from the very beginning all the way to advanced concepts. Um, in 40 minutes. I've, I've never tried to use a tutorial like that. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Kenton in that if you're starting a project and you're trying to follow a tutorial, it might make sense to do the tutorial, tutorial to learn about one component of the project that you're doing to get a better understanding of that tech or, or something like that. Um, but if you're sort of doing a tutorial, often I find that uh, it's a little bit constraining that I guess the, the tutorial is the, uh, the thing that's steering the direction of your project rather than... Mm. Um, what you're thinking your yourself yeah hmm. um but yeah anyway hold on what was the original question uh, I, I mean i guess yeah so i i guess kenton already kind of answered it but in his own way about how to choose a technology and how you're you're constrained by by the um by the constraints <laughs> of, your, of oh, yeah, what you're okay, trying to I design now. i remember um, what i was gonna say but like i mean um, yeah yeah what were you gonna say mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, I, I remember originally you've asked uh, once you know the project, what you're going to do afterwards, right? Uh, what the next step yeah, is. And yeah, yeah, yeah. basically said you start from Googling um, and then eventually you just have the project unfold from there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah. basically exactly right. And the the the, uh, the two things that I thought of that I'd add is first, uh, you can use sort of knowledge that you already have. Uh, what do I know about um, the system, this, uh, this thing that I want to try and get working, right? Um, and how can I sort of get as close as I can to the objective first uh, and then keep going, right? Um, and then the other one, and actually this is part of the story for UQ Planner is actually just tell people. Uh, if you don't know how you might get it to work, go on, tell people, hey, I think that um, I really want this, right? Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know how hard of a project that it might be, uh, that it might be um, but I really want to do it. And I think this is something that's really worth making. Um, and that's actually what happened to me. Um, we just uh, sort of had a, a group chat, uh, me and uh, me and Will. And in that chat, I said, oh, I can't believe they've taken the planner down. Right. Um, and then Will happened to have seen, seen that message. And he, he said, hey, hold on. Uh, I was doing a course last semester and I made a really basic version of a timetable planner. Uh, <laughs> do you think we could maybe use that uh, and then sort of get somewhere from it? Um, and that's where it like sort of eventually unfolded from there. Right, and so yeah, the third one would be uh, asking people and then seeing what, what what happens there. Mm. Yeah, and 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 I guess so. So when when you when you've done, well, I guess like, do you have a? Let's say you start a project from scratch, right? So so a lot of these projects are, are kind of web based, right? Um, often, yeah, I guess. Often, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, um, do you have a stack of choice? 
that you jump to. I guess, like, obviously, if it's a user script, then, you know, you're limited. But if it's your own application, uh, do, you, do you prefer a certain front-end framework or anything like that? Um, at least for me, um, when we started off the planner, Will's project was already in Angular. Um, and I thought, Angular, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I've got uh, uh, some experience using Angular. And so let's let's keep going from there. Um, but then I don't know, today I've, uh, if, if I were to start the project again today, I, I would say, oh, I've got more experience in React. And so I might start with that. Um, mm -hmm. But really, I think um, it might depend on sort of just what you want to learn, what you might feel most comfortable in. Um, and then if you were trying to try to think about the project long term, right? Uh, if, if you want to sort of keep this up for a while, uh, what's the technology that I can use to make this the most maintainable for me? Uh, and and the cheapest to uh, to sort of run. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I think um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of personal projects of mine have been web deployed, <clears throat> so they're deployed uh, on some, onto the website. And definitely, React and TypeScript is probably the easiest stack to work with there. And. Darren has a really good point, which is you should try and make it maintainable. Mm -hmm. uh, because too often, I feel like personal projects or side projects end up being temporary or just like you create it once and you forget about it, um, which is a shame because these are useful things and it would be nice if they stayed around so more people can use them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think on that note, it would be good to avoid things like having to run your own server. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and there are lots of tools available which let you do just that. Like uh, serverless is pretty big right now, and it works very well with React and TypeScript. And there are things like Google's Firebase, yeah. which will give you cloud functions to run code on the cloud. They give you a database. They give you authentication and a whole bunch of things with a pretty generous free tier. And it just does all of that work for you. And the best part is you can just leave it there and it'll keep chugging along uh, whenever it needs to. And you don't need to worry about your server crashing. You don't need to worry about maintaining your own database. Mm -hmm. And it's just pretty cool. I think it can help to create a side project which lives a bit longer than the average one. Yeah, I I've used I've used Firebase myself and, I, and I, I love it because it's just so, yeah, you can you can kind of just leave it, leave it alone um, and it will just do its thing. Um, yeah, have, 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 there, have any of your projects like needed or have you, have you, so have you ever gone back to your projects and been like, I need to fix something or is it just, yep. uh, I think on that one, actually one, one good thing to add is that if you're writing code, um, mm. make sure to, I guess you kind of know, uh, or you, you might have the feeling uh, at the beginning that you don't know whether this is going to go anywhere. And so you don't, you aren't really that inclined to write really clean code or really, uh, maintainable code. Um, but I, I think one lesson that I've learned is that if you don't, uh, it will probably come back to bite you. Um, mm. And so do try to write nice code um, because you don't know whether you'll have to come back to this in a semester or two. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, the best way to make it maintainable is to, to make sure that everything you write is sort of uh, nice and clean. You don't have things all scattered across uh, different files in a way that's completely uh, or like really hard to manage or, or anything like that. Um, mm. Yeah, um, always yes. good to sort of Keep your code maintainable. I guess everything is temporary <laughs> until it's not. <laughs> Every, exactly. Everything is temporary until it's not. That's good advice. Um, and actually, I just on that note as well. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? Oh, uh, I think I also had some things to add about what Kenton was saying about sort of making sure that uh, your project is scalable. Um, mm -hmm. At least with Yuki Planner, I can say that uh, I've used a service called Netlify. Um, and because mm -hmm. when you're building a React application, uh, because it's JavaScript, it's entirely run from uh, from inside the browser, right? Um, mm. You don't need a backend at all, which means that um, there are services like Netlify, which purely serve the assets of your app statically, right? Um, they don't actually sort of do any calculations in the backend. Um, they, ser they purely serve the files of, of your app. Um, you've got lots of services like that, um, like Netlify, that can serve your app for free. Um, and then you can use them... Uh, so that's not very clear. Uh, yeah, you've got you've got services like Netlify that uh, serve your app for free, um, and then you can basically just run them without worrying. Have to get running into fees. Um, and then the second thing was uh, cloud functions, 
And then with uh, the UQ Planner, uh, what I actually did was I actually looked at all of the cloud service providers, all the, uh, all the providers for Lambda functions, and I found that Cloudflare uh, was a service provider that gave the maximum number of requests per, uh, for free per day. And that was the reason why I used them uh, for, for the Planner. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think, Actually, I think uh, that part I was have a question bit. on that. Uh, yes. Uh, have you ever gotten close to hitting the free requests limit on Cloudflare for UQ Planner? It's pretty popular, I think. Um, it actually has. Um, but oh wow, that was actually because of a bug. Uh, it was. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite funny. I don't remember the exact details of the bug, um, but ah, uh, yeah, I remember. Um, so I think in the sec in the second semester that we introduced uh, the planner, uh, we had this idea that um, because the course times are often changing even after you've initially loaded them, um, that would basically sort of automatically re make requests to try and see if changes were being made and then sort of update them in the front end uh, automatically. Um, and then when we first made that change, um, I can't remember exactly what was what we were doing in the front end, um, but what ended up happening was that uh, all of our clients are basically making a ton of requests to our Lambda function, uh, <laughs> requesting yeah, to see whether changes uh, had been made to any of the course times. Uh, and then because we had tons of computers running this, this front end uh, uh, roundabout when we had course registrations and things like that, uh, sign-ons, um, we hit that uh, free tier limit pretty quickly. Um, and then I think we ended up paying something like $5 or something around that uh, just to, to open up the limit a little bit. Um, but I think that was the only time when we ran into, uh, into that problem. There were a few times when I think we got close uh, under normal usage conditions, but um, generally, I think, I mean, if you've got a university with uh, 20, 30, 30,000 people and that doesn't happen too often, it's not something that uh, you need to worry about too much. It's, pr it's pretty cool that you can have, a, have essentially the service that so many people use and it costs nearly nothing to run. Honestly, it's it, kind of crazy. I, I think. Um, I, I think it's it's a really good deal. Uh, yeah. And it, yeah. Kind of kind of one reason why you can say that um, if you're sort of launching a project, uh, you don't have to worry about the the cost too much later on. Uh, if you sort of think about the way that you architect a little bit at the beginning, um, you you likely won't even have to pay anything at all. Uh, especially if you can have all the work being done uh, in the client and in the browser instead of uh, in, in some backend. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one last thing I, I, I wanted to ask um, is about when, when you have done a project, uh, do, do, you, do you have any, I guess, ways of testing it or, or getting the word out about your project? Any preferred methods of uh, shilling, I guess? <laughs> yeah i'll go first on this one because my shilling is much less effective than darren's i think i don't know by the way um, i just want to say that i think uh with at least with the planner uh we just very much happened to be uh in the right place at the right time um i, I don't really think that there was anything in particular that i did that sort of i guess like made the difference especially in terms of shilling uh yeah uh, but yeah continue mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> Yeah, I was just saying that um, I think if you want to test, it's a good idea to reach out to some friends who might find benefit from what you've made. Mm. And they're always able to give feedback and they won't be too mad at you if something goes wrong. Um, beyond that, hash projects on the EQCS Slack is super cool. There are lots of people talking about their own projects, uh, so you can share it there and you can get some feedback. And also, you, um, if you have any questions, that's also a good place to go and get help from experienced people in the EQCS community. Mm. Uh, but apart from that, I don't really share my projects out that much. Mm. I, I, they don't have to be shared, right? Like, I guess it, as long as it solves a problem that that you wanted to solve, I, I guess yeah, that's I mean, plenty that's, for a lot of people. That's my thinking. Like, yeah. I make a lot of these for me. And if it works good enough, it's good enough for me. Hmm. Um. Darren, I guess, do you want to say anything? Uh, yep. Yeah. I guess from me, uh, uh, once you're sort of at a point where, with a project where you think, oh, I really want to get this out there. Let's see what happens. Let's give it to some people. Um, you can put it on uh, places like Facebook, uh, Reddit, um, groups like, I don't know, Core Space, Talker Space. 
um, things like that. Uh, I think these mm. days, uh, maybe even on uh, Discord, you, you can see a Slack and it's just a really good place to, to uh, get word out there on your project. Um, but then other than that, I, I really agree with what Kenton said um, about sort of asking your friends. Um, it's a really good way to sort of, if you want to eventually get your project really out there, right? Um, or sort of uh, have it become something that uh, people actually go and use. Uh, it's really good to just go and ask people, hey, uh, I've, gone, I've gone and done this. Uh, what do you think about it? Um, how do you think I could improve it? Um, and just ask questions like that. Um, because I've, I've done that before with a lot of the projects that I've done. And I think that um, it's definitely something that's been really helpful. And usually people are more than, more than willing to, to help out. Mm. Yeah, I think that especially if you're going to go and try and get lots of people to use it, you want to make sure that it works pretty well before you do that. Uh, because you only have one chance to make a first impression. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. Um, I think, uh, yeah, with the planner, just before we launched, uh, we were so stressed out that there'd be issues with it or things like that. Um, and uh, it turned out that we'd, we'd done our homework, um, we'd, we'd tested it well, and uh, not too much happened. Uh, not, not too much uh, sort of disastrous <laughs> happened uh, on, uh, on, the, on the day that we decided to post on Facebook and everything like that. Yeah, I guess you can never expect what happens when you get bombarded with traffic and, and new users and all that kind of it's just whatever happens, happens, I guess. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Or you can try your best to prepare for it, but yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't think I have really anything else, um, that I, I wanted to ask in particular, but as a, as a final thing, do you have any advice for, for first years or maybe second years or even X years? You just want to <laughs> try out some side projects for the first time? Any? I think, uh, hmm, I don't know. For me, for side projects with me, the most difficult thing has been motivation. Well, ideas. And then once you have the idea motivation. Um, so I think, yeah, just find some motivation, whether that's, um, friends telling you that, Hey, this will be super useful or whether this is something that you really want to solve some problem. Um, yeah, some kind of motivation will go a long way to making sure that you a finished a side project, first of all, because there are too many unfinished side projects. <laughs> I have a few. I'm sure everyone has, has hundreds. some yep. they can talk about. Same with yeah. me. Yeah, but yeah, and B, uh, that you do it well. Because if you care about something, uh, you'll naturally want to do a good job and you'll want to improve the user experience so everyone um, enjoys using what you've made. Mm. I think. Yeah. Any, any Darren? tips from you, Darren? Um, yeah, I completely agree with Kenton. I think uh, you should really take an attitude where you're just kind of curious to try and fix things, uh, learn things and try and uh, help other people. Um, and then like you, you don't know when you might end up creating something that uh, uh, could be really, really useful to a lot of other people. Um, and then on what Kenton was saying about motivation, uh, one sort of hack that I've done a few times is honestly just try and link it to your courses a little bit um, or link it to things where you do have to put in a, a certain amount of effort. Uh, every once in a while um, so that I guess you, you kind of have a, a, a sort of a deadline pushing you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if you've sort of linked it to a course that it's, it can still be considered a, a side project. Um, but uh, one thing that I found is like, uh, say, for example, um, I've, I've, I've done the side project where I scraped uh, the New York Times with like, I think, six gigs of data something or, or something and then visualized the entire thing um, that I linked that to the course cost uh, 3000. Uh, I think oh, what, yeah, it was, yeah. what was what was the name of the course? Uh, I think it was uh, the uh, visualization course. Data visualization data, data visualization. I can't one hundred percent remember. Um, I think but, yeah, visualization, computer graphics, and data analysis. I think yeah, that's something the like one. That. Something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, um, having so I wanted to do that project, um, or I wanted to do some kind of uh, data analysis project, um, and then enrolling myself into that course uh, really sort of pushed me to to keep going with it. Um, and it sort of gave me the initial push to get the project to a point where I was quite happy with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. thanks so much, uh, both of you. And um, yeah, it's been really good to hear about your experiences with the side projects. And I hope that encourages uh, our listeners to try some of their own. Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, just one last word for me. Uh, there is a side project that you should totally try out that's related to the UQ Computing Society. 
um, and it goes by the name of UQCS bot, uh, which I will link um, in the you know in the description. Uh, and I I don't know if it counts really as a side project, but you know, might be <laughs> something worth trying out in your time. There's a bunch of things that you can, bunch of features that you can add to UQCS bot. You know, if you've ever had a grievance on the UQCS Slack about something that you wish was uh, functionality, uh, I guess it's worth something trying out. Uh, on that reaper yeah. so i'll link that <laughs> yeah i think uqcs spot is great um there's always features to do as well as bugs to fix uh of course i think in particular it's great because it's made by the members of uqcs for the members of uqcs um so it's extremely easy to get help um on the uqcs slack if you're stuck or don't understand something with the bot we're all happy to help out and it's a pretty good place to start if like it's your first project as well. Yeah. Because as I said, lots of support along the way. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a sounds like a good deal, right? <laughs> sounds very cool. I'd like to have a go at it. All right, thanks so much. Good luck to everyone with your side projects. Yeah. They're great fun. Happy hacking. All right, that's all we have time for today. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, the next episode of The Router will be out in a fortnight. Uh, apologies for the delay on this one, but we hope it was worth the wait. Um, until then, don't forget to join our Slack community at slack.uqcs.org. My name is Matthew Lowe, and this podcast was created by the UQ Computing Society with gracious support from our industry sponsors.